Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I thought, let's see, first let me tell you, today is Wednesday, June 3rd, and it's 4.27 p.m. And I thought that uh, as much as we're going through here in our country, maybe we could just take our eyes off of it for a minute and look at somebody else. Sounds like North India is really getting the, the brunt of what would appear to be the wrath of God already, but I don't know. You be the judge. Maybe it's all natural. Maybe it's man-made. Maybe it's Satan. Anyway, let me tell you what's going on over there. I got a, um, let's see, what did I get? in my email there is a link to a, to a publication called thebigwobble.org I had not heard of this publication before and if you want to get news from across the world and what's going on over there in places besides the USA then you might want to think about checking it out and signing up for it. Anyway, this title of this article is called As the Riots in the U.S. Grab the World Headlines Northern India is Battling a Massive Locust Invasion. Hmm. A heat wave touching 50 degrees Celsius which is 122 degrees Fahrenheit. It's hotter than I can handle. A severe cyclonic storm and COVID-19. <laughs> As the riots in the U.S. grabbed the headlines this week, the unprecedented invasion by desert locusts has increased and hit large swaths of India and Pakistan who are in the middle of their battle with coronavirus pandemic. According to the FAO, and I thought, who is the FAO? So I looked it up. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Come to find out, it's an agency that combats global hunger and promotes rural development. And it was born in 1945. Now whose fault is it that they're starving children in Africa? I'd say it's these people right here. Why have they not been able to get these people that live in these areas where the babies are so hungry, their bellies are bloated as big as a pregnant woman's? Have you seen them? It's pathetic. It's very, very sad. And then people who go in there that take sacks of some kind of meal they turn it into something like a cornmeal I ate it as a child I loved it uh, when we would get a hot cereal of any kind cream of wheat oatmeal that we called it cornmeal mush well anyway that's what it looks like they're eating something like that and they're getting a bowl full of that a day what are these people doing Anyway, back to the article. <laughs> oh boy, this dog is so funny. He is taking a liking to my footstool, so he kind of hogs it anyway. Um, so anyway, according to this FAO, large and aggressive swarms of these crop-devouring Short-horned insects have invaded more than two dozen districts covering more than 50,000 hectares of desert. 
I'm sure that's their measurement where we would say acres. Probably not equal, but whatever. Um, I didn't look that up. Areas of Western India. Rajash. Okay, Rajasthan. Maria. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Pradesh and Gujarat. Gujarat <laughs> are the worst affected states. To make matters worse, parts of India saw temperatures rise to 47.6 Celsius on Tuesday as most of North India faced severe heat wave conditions. The heat wave, which officials say is likely to last until the weekend, comes even as the region struggles with rising COVID infections and swarms of locusts that are ravaging crops. Churu in Churu or Kuru, C H U R U, in Rajasthan state recorded a temperature of 50 degrees Celsius, which is 122 degrees Fahrenheit, India's highest. To make matters worse, a powerful cyclonic storm in the Arabian Sea is very likely to intensify into a severe cyclonic storm during the next six hours. The India Meteorological Department said on Wednesday, the cyclone designated Nisarga could make landfall. So I guess that's equivalent to our hurricane. A cyclone. See, I always thought that was equivalent to a tornado. Anyway, it could make landfall between on the coastal border region of Maharashtra and Gujarat, Gujarat states with winds gusting up to 120 miles per hour or 75 miles per hour. Did I say 120 kilometers? I hope I did. <laughs> Might have said miles per hour. Uh, the equivalent of a Category 1 hurricane, the IMD said. Some, that must be international media, international, the India Meteorological Department. In neighboring Pakistan, authorities declared a national emergency in February, saying locust numbers were the worst in more than two decades. Local reports say that farmers are fighting the, quote, worst locust plague in nearly three decades, unquote. And the swarms were decimating crops and sending prices of food soaring. So while we had our floods and now... COVID, which meant you couldn't have people out there working the farms because they'd be side by side. So, no, you can't do that. So now crops had to be turned under here in the U.S. Animals had to be slaughtered. And now you've got India and Pakistan having locusts eating all their crops. Well, looks like Bible prophecy is coming to pass worldwide. Well, I say, across the world and here, and I'm sure there are other stories that will be coming up. All right. It says, the situation is much more serious this year, not only in Afghanistan. Wait a minute, did I skip a sentence? I think I did. Okay. And the swarms were decimating crops and sending prices of food soaring. Some 38% of Pakistan's area 
spread over the provinces of Balakistan, Sindh, S-I-N-D-H, and Punjab are, quote, breeding grounds, unquote, for locusts, according to a report by the Food and Agricultural Organization, or the FAO, of the United Nations. The situation is much more serious this year, not only in Afghanistan, India, Iran, and Pakistan, but in all the frontline countries in Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. There we go. Mohammed Tariq Khan, director of Pakistan's Department of Plant Protection, claimed. Below is an update of the locust swarms affecting some of the poorest countries in the world. Okay, and then they talk about Southwest Asia, India, Pakistan, Arabian Peninsula, um, Yemen, Oman, 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 Saudi Arabia, East Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia, Uganda, and Sudan. So I will leave a link in the description box if you want to read about each individual place I just mentioned. So while we're going through our thing, the rest of the world is going through theirs. And I don't know how the COVID-19 pandemic is, is doing there or in your area. If y'all would like to leave a comment, I'll tell you about ours. As you know, May 1st, they started letting up on things and letting second floor, which is assisted living, go out and visit on the patio as long as they wore a mask. And now they've put sheeting up June 1st. It's like an area that was turned into a nurse's station used to be an exit to the patio so that second floor residents could just go either sit in that little area that they turned into a nurse's station or they could just go out the door and go right straight into the patio instead of going around and out the main way that people come and go. Okay. Well, now they've put a plastic sheeting up, and there's a carpet in there, and residents can be wheeled out, or they can a chair can be taken for them to sit down on so that family members can come. This is for second and third floor people that aren't allowed to see their family. They haven't been able to have any visitors at all. So now they can have visitors come and instead of putting them out on the balcony they're off a third and them the family sitting down here and they're on cell phones you know talking and that's what they were doing yesterday which was really cool I thought but then they put this plastic up or maybe that was the day before I don't know I lose track of the days so, and now we've got our second confirmed case of COVID in a resident, someone that lives here. They don't tell us where or who, but uh, it got out that there was one on third floor. They're doing fine. And the employees that tested positive that worked around them, they're doing fine. That's all they said. They are doing well. Of course they are. How could anybody on the third floor that are the sickest of the sickest of us get COVID and not even have to go to the hospital? You see? And yet yesterday I got told, you put your mask on when you come down here to the second floor. I was told nicely, you've got to put your mask on when you come down here. And a letter came out today that told us we had to wear a mask when we were out of our rooms. We had to. They don't even know they're not that they're worthless. That they don't. They don't. They. I guess they missed the speech from 
Tony Fauci that said masks were useless. I guess that wasn't put on primetime TV. Good grief. Well, anyway, I just have to remember to wear my other glasses because these that are taped, they fall off when I wear a mask. <laughs> I don't want to break them anymore. Anyway, I just wanted to bring you a little bit of news from on the other side of the world. And I thought I had read in here, or maybe it was in uh, the person who sent it's comment. Um, let me see. Um, well, I won't tell you who sent it, but I'm going to share some of this because she does a lot of research and she knows um, she said a good article India, Pakistan, Africa and many others having huge locust invasions look at the size of them yeah the, I'll try to get a picture and use that um, as my custom thumbprint I thought they look like little airplanes like those little balsa wood airplanes that my brothers used to play with and will be more at harvest time also, like the Bible says, my own wording, what harvest, actually it says more like severely diminished crops in some areas and only minute gatherings and is why it will take a whole day's wages just to buy a loaf of bread. My wording, not exact, but yeah, that's like the fourth seal. Uh, loaf of bread for, yeah, a whole day's wages. India is being hit with four different plagues all at once. Keep in mind that most of India and much of Africa and most of their Middle East worship false gods. It's all in the Bible. Pray they denounce false gods and turn to the one true God. And Jesus Christ as their Savior. God is sending many warnings, but if they don't read the Bible, they won't see the connection. They'll pray to their false gods for protection, and none will come. Sad. The U.S. too used to be one nation under God, and then we were prosperous and protected and blessed by God. But much of the USA is now one nation against God, or Godless, or serving false gods also. Pray more return and repent, because our turn is in progress and will worsen, if not, if more people would just realize all that God has protected us from and blessed us with, weather events, rain in due seasons, crops, health, clean water in abundance, for the most part, protection from enemies, foreign and domestic, well, it, that could possibly be because we've positioned our troops all over the world but floods tsunamis plagues the list is endless yeah we have been a protected nation but so many have said or are saying we don't want your help so he meaning god is removing it whoa that is also why there are already 8 million Muslims in North America already ready to commit jihad against us. Has anybody forgotten about that? There was a big uproar about that several years ago. How so many moved in in the 70s, started having children who were American citizens because they were born here had many of them learned the English language perfectly well 
Well, anyway, this person says that O, you know, the big O, was one of them who helped escort them in for just what is taking place now from the inside out or from within. So God is allowing it because he's essentially been told to stand down. We can take care of ourselves. We don't need you. People might not admit that that's what they would say, but your actions speak louder than words. Wouldn't you agree? People can say, oh, I'm a Christian, definitely. I go to church every Sunday. Or, well, okay, most Sundays. and Well, not lately you haven't, but before the COVID thing, you know what I'm saying. But do they trust in God? Do they pray for decisions? Do they ask Him before making a big one? Hey, I used to, I didn't used to. I still don't on some things I should. It takes a relationship. We got to have a relationship with God. He wants more than just us having a title of Christian. Because we chose one day to go say a prayer and join a church. And, and maybe we even got baptized by immersion. Yeah, maybe. And not everybody even did that. But they joined a church. There are so many Catholic-like Christian denominations. It's ridiculous. And they don't believe like we do. Most of them do not believe like we do. And you try to tell them the truth. That they need to leave. Leave. The brick and mortar 501 C3 churches because they're tied in with the government. Oh, yes, they are. I don't care how good you think your preacher preaches. If they're a 501 C3, they are not telling you the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. So help them, God. They're leaving stuff out and maybe even adding a little in. Oh, well, I didn't mean to get off on that. But this, uh, let's see if there's anything else I want to add real quick. Uh, she talked about um, all is in the Bible. Call on the name of Jesus today. Time is almost up. You'll never regret it. Look at what happened to those who Noah tried to warn they all laughed him to scorn, and they did, and they all perished. No one believed him. No one. Only Noah and his family survived. Please don't be one of the unbelievers. Not a scoffer like millions, billions. Love and I won't say her name. She added a song. Uh, it was something. Um, we've got to get America back to God. It's too late for that. He's taking his hand off of America. I started listening to it. And I hate to say it. But I have no hopes in my heart. For getting America back to God. I pray that. People will return to God. I don't believe America as a whole will. But we must keep trying for those we know, praying for all we can. Jesus and Father, Holy Spirit can work miracles. They can give people dreams and visions and signs and wonders Make open their eyes, soften their hearts, so that at least some 
can be spared before more disasters hit here or over there. Anyway, um, and uh, she said, the whole world needs to return to God. Well, return or go in the first place or perish. Well, they'll have seven years of tribulation. Those who are not Nephilim, oh, I've got to do a video on that video. I got to share a video with you. I'm making it in a second video. I will end this one here. And um, with that, I will say uh, I played the blood of Jesus over this and over the internet connection, my computer, myself, and over each and every single one of you. Let us keep each other in our prayers. I, I plead the blood of Jesus over your devices and your internet connections so we can stay connected until we're out of here. All right. Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.